is leadership for you, Dr. Yo? <laughs> no, this is uh, both a broad question as well as a deep question. I, <laughs> I think I will answer it um, in two ways. I think first, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to, to define leadership further, I would say that uh, using an analogy of uh, in the shipping, shipping industry, Mm -hmm. um, I would say that a leader has to be the the lead ship, okay. And if we are, maybe I just explain what is a lead ship. So mm -hmm. uh, when there is, you know, when a company sets out to produce a, a, a new kind of marine vessel, mm -hmm. uh, the very very first vessel that they that they they will construct and design is called the lead ship. And what mm -hmm. this lead ship uh, serves to the do I is is to be the prototype and to be the mm -hmm. template for future. Uh, ships within the same class oh, okay. and as you know uh, when you build uh, uh, you know, uh, those huge uh, marine vessels it's very very expensive and therefore usually the ship owners the manufacturing companies they can't afford to make many mistakes so what mm -hmm. they do is that they will concentrate on building a single uh, uh, lead ship uh, they will they will put in you know what the best designs that they thought would be at that time mm -hmm. and Thereafter, the future ships will follow with improvements. And then mm -hmm. the lead ship will get upgrades along the way. That means mm -hmm. they will re retrofit improvements to the lead ship based on the learnings that they get when, you know, when the lead ship has been used in, in practice. So I, I draw this analogy to leadership because mm -hmm. I, think, I think every leader has to lead by example. Yes, sure. and you, you generally have to move into uncharted waters. You probably wouldn't know what lies ahead? Uh, what are the challenges? What are the you know? What are the rewards at the end? Uh, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. you have to be the one to lead by example, to be the prototype, to show mm -hmm. your colleagues, your staff, what what are the behaviors, what are the values that you should you should have. Then learn from your staff because your staff will then follow you. They will go out with you into the into the oceans, you know, mm -hmm. to, into areas that you've never explored, and very often you will see improvements in behavior which your staff would exhibit and how mm -hmm. you then make use of it is to assimilate what your staff demonstrates in as part of your own behavior so that's what i meant by retrofitting improvements uh, to your own self uh. but you must always be the first one to go out there so to me i think this is an example in fact i just thought of uh, it's the first time i've actually used this example uh, in a forum like this uh, and i mm -hmm. think that would be nice uh, maybe to expand further then from lead ship being, being the lead ship you become the one to lead the ship okay now you also realize that the group of people you have are all on the same boat as you we are all practically in the same boat uh, you should regard them as your family right then therefore in in a family you must communicate often you know you have to explain what you're trying to do with them likewise to listen to them so a, a good leader must communicate well and also must be empathetic and mm -hmm. how does the ship find find its destination uh, you have a you have a certain vision that you want to do then you have a compass or nowadays people don't use compass we use gps um, <laughs> so so that that i draw this to to maybe um, explain that therefore being a leader uh, you will need to have a vision you it means you must tell your people what you want to achieve or where you want to go and you must mm -hmm. tell them the purpose which is the why why are we doing this and finally, you also tell them the how. The how will probably be the values, the ethics, or the principles that you will embody. So, mm -hmm. so I think yes, I will use this, these two, and these two, um, um, you know, these two uh, uh, analogies that come from the shipping industry uh, to illustrate what I feel about leadership. Good question, though. Thanks. What would you say would be the top three problems that um, most leaders do face? right there are many problems uh, out there <laughs> and i think many of the leaders tuning in can attest to that uh, maybe in my in my case i find that my top three challenges uh, mm -hmm. would be number one is to build the correct culture for my team uh, and for my organization uh, mm -hmm. i find it difficult um, because you know um, People, requ people require supervision uh, mm -hmm. quite often. Um, then what happens is as a leader, are we able to then uh, move towards an environment where we have minimal supervision? 
but we don't need to be at the breathing down the necks of our you know our colleagues so that they'll do what's right in other words um, is I, I like a culture of people doing what's right even when nobody is watching i think that is when you can truly say that um, you have built a very successful culture uh, in your workplace um, and having that correct culture is also something that we can use as a common language to communicate between uh, various departments between various colleagues so that once we say this is something that, that is right for the company everybody knows that this is the standard this is what we accept as the practice so i think building that culture is i won't say it's a problem but i say it is a continuous um target or rather a moving target we keep trying to push mm -hmm. everyone to go towards it number two which uh, i find a challenge is is uh, managing change and mm -hmm. it, it is a bigger problem well not say bigger problem yeah but it's the challenge is getting more difficult and tougher these days uh, mm -hmm. moving from the pandemic into the new normal as i earlier on mentioned is then therefore um, how do we keep our people agile uh, mm -hmm. how do we give them that spirit of transformation of innovation which i described by uh, the four characteristics earlier on um, it, it is encouraging change but at the same time giving people assurance that uh, change will not disrupt their jobs because some people mm -hmm. also worry if you change my job scope my, my job my portfolio will i be able to keep up will i be displaced as a result and therefore as responsible employees as uh, inspiring leader then you have to encourage them to to mm -hmm. learn new skills uh, to to you know to expand their own um, you know knowledge so and so forth uh, in order for them to adapt to new things and then the mm -hmm. final problem also would be you know, quite contradictory to what i just talked about change uh, earlier on i said managing change but i i also find there's another flip side to it is managing what should be constant and what should be constant in my opinion again goes back to um, your culture your values your principles your ethics should remain constant despite having a, a changing environment uh, you know you, people should always have this firm belief uh, in what the, the DNA of a company and the DNA of the leader it ha has. Uh. Yeah, so, so thanks for asking me to share about these three problems. <laughs> what are the important leadership capabilities or skills uh, leaders must have in this next normal to be able to you know, continuously lead effectively or to thrive in this new normal? Mm, mm, um, I... I don't have, I, or rather, I don't want to touch on specific skills, uh, whether it's hard skills, soft skills. Mm -hmm. um, in, in this case, I, because I think it's very, very broad, and every mm -hmm. industry would have uh, different requirements. Uh. So, but let's mm -hmm. touch on the principles behind mm -hmm. leadership. And I would mm -hmm. say it is building uh, capabilities, uh, which you earlier mentioned. So, starting from maybe the level one is your core competence. Uh which is specific mm -hmm. to your industry, to your sector, and to your role. So you need to be m minimally competent. Otherwise, you will yeah. not even get to be a leader. Okay, so we assume that you have your core competence. Then the next thing a leader should do is to build uh, likability. I, I find it hard for a leader to lead for long term if uh, everyone hates the leader. Uh, so I think mm -hmm. not asking a leader to be Mr. Popular or you know, or, or uh, Miss Universe. I mean, it's, we're not mm -hmm. looking for populist leaders, but we're looking for leaders who listen, who are empathetic with your own staff, with your own colleagues. Uh, that would be probably uh, a level two requirement. And moving from there as to level three, I, I would expect the leader to have the ability to connect with people. So I call that connectivity, mm -hmm. which means um, a able to go deeper than just the uh, uh, high and by uh, to have relate relationships with uh, healthy relationships with your your co-workers and, and your staff and also for people outside your organization i think that's important and then to the level four would be the influence ability mm -hmm. uh, and this influence ability is earlier i mentioned you you would a person who has that that this influence ability will be someone who can uh, give people a vision who can give people purpose and these people will follow the leader and do what what the leader has inspired so i think maybe 
these are the four levels of capabilities uh, or that a leader should develop in 